everyone, welcome to another Animation Friday, and today I thought it would be interesting to dive into the Looney Tunes um, and sort of discuss their history and how they've evolved over the years and where sort of they stand currently. Uh, since I've um, sort of delved into the history of animation in general, I thought it'd be interesting to dive in particular into this studio because it has had a lot of cultural influence over the years. It's become really a household name uh, among Western animation, and uh, it offered, I think, something fairly unique and uh, is what makes it in particular stand out as one of the um, animated series greats. So without further ado, let me sort of discuss um, the Looney Tunes series. Um, uh, Looney Tunes is largely based in comedy, uh, as opposed to drama or um, or uh, happiness uh, or um, or uh, really addressing you know deep struggles um, like what Disney Animation was trying to showcase. Uh, because uh, with Disney animation, you will see that there's a variety of different emotions throughout their animation, uh, but they don't largely in they don't largely focus on one particular uh, genre. They mainly try to showcase their cartoons and kind of give you different um, understandings uh, when it comes to dealing with certain circumstances. Uh, within life, and they sort of have life lessons at the same time. Uh, whereas Looney Tunes is largely based on trying to make kids laugh and really go full on out into the goofiness of it, uh, as opposed to kind of taking its audience seriously. Um, and again, uh, it's not to say that Looney Tunes in any way, shape, or form insults its audience, no. Um, but it does try to focus in on generating humor and humorous responses and wackiness uh, rather than trying to showcase really a lesson or morals or um, or different kinds of emotions. It's largely based within comedy. And these short um, series is, took place between 1930 and 1969. However, we'll eventually see that Looney Tunes is starting to reemerge again with its more recent show, which I will get into. Um, but the interesting thing about Looney Tunes is, is that it didn't really start out with the most famous characters right out of the gate. Um... Uh, with Walt, I think it was with Walt Disney Studios. I think it was similar because again they had the the rabbit, um, but then later on uh, that idea was taken, and so Walt sort of created his own character, um, and uh, to sort of combat this this uh, taking over of the initial character he had set out. But with Looney Tunes, it was rather different. Um, it started out with uh, the characters of Bosco and Buddy. Um, and uh, you probably haven't even heard of these characters because they don't really sound like household names. Um, I think that they maintained a steady popularity, but they weren't as uh, significant uh, compared to um compared to other Looney Tunes characters but the these were the two characters that really started the ball rolling um when it comes to Looney Tunes uh it started off becoming fairly popular within movie theaters because again during the 1930s we had um animation being showcased in the movie theaters as opposed to being showcased um, through film or through television. So that's something I think that's very significant to note. Uh, and uh, 
again, it's they were sort of Walt and Disney, Walt and Looney Tunes were really the competitors of their time. Um, they were really the ones that were both sort of on that same playing field, whereas a lot of anima other animated studios sort of came and went. Uh, these two, in particular Walt Disney Studios and the Looney Tunes, which is part of Warner Brothers, they lasted probably the most, probably the, the most, amount of time um, without having some financial problem. Uh, so uh, that's largely where their animation stems from, but again we see it later on being incorporated into television, into, into, um, into short films and things like that, so um, definitely something that's uh, significant to their history. Uh, also, Looney Tunes, surprisingly, is noted for its music, sort of similar, but yet different to Walt Disney's. Um, with Walt Disney, it was lar music was fairly emphasized throughout, um, throughout the films, as well as the cartoon shorts. And with Looney Tunes, it was largely based within Looney Tunes, and, um, at the same time trying to create something iconic and uh, memorable. Sort of like uh, how with Walt Disney Studios they showcase the When You Wish Upon a Star song as like their kind of main go-to song to know that okay you're watching a Disney film. Uh, they didn't do that so much with their shorts. Their shorts were usually with you know with um, kind of just this upbeat, fun, happy-go-lucky kind of music, and then you get into the short. Whereas with Looney Tunes, we do have the iconic Yeah. That's iconic opening. And the animators... In particular, the people also that were in charge of um, showcasing this animation, Warner Brothers, really knew that this having this kind of a catchy opening is really going to define uh, a lot of what uh, emotions and uh, messages that they're trying to convey. And they did this all through just just, just having this one song be really the opening and closing up to their cartoon. Uh, of their cartoons. So again, it's it's really something to get your audience invested in understanding what um, the audience is going to experience. Um, Walt Disney did this similarly with the Silly Symphony shorts, but again, the Silly Symphony shorts were a little bit less defined in regards to the music, um, whereas with Looney Tunes, it was clear right out of the gate, you're watching a Looney Tunes short, and you know what you're in for. Uh, and that music really conveys that. And has really become sort of a household tune that everybody knows. <laughs> um, so, uh, basically, after Bosco and Buddy, we get the first ever technically Looney Tune. And the interesting thing is, is, is that the First ever Looney Tune was Porky the Pig. Wasn't Bugs, wasn't Daffy Duck, wasn't Elmer Fudd, um, it wasn't the Coyote, it was Porky the Pig. Um, Porky the Pig became the first, uh, first Looney Tune, and, uh, their first short was Sinking in the Bathtub. Uh, and, uh, that's really what got them the ball rolling, and again, uh, they did initially have black and white as their main uh, as their main uh, choice of animation colors in the beginning and the starts of their animation process, like the 1930s and 40s, and then later on, as you'll see in sort of in the 50s, we get color. And uh, it's sort of the same with, with Walt Disney's animation. Uh, you In the 30s, it was largely uh, largely black and white, and then later on, uh, it became colored. Um, 
But uh, the first Looney Tunes store was actually made in 1935, too. So it really, if, if you figure Looney Tunes technically started in 1930 and we have these Bosco and Buddy characters who are technically not considered Looney Tunes, although they're part of the the animated series, you really see how they they really got the ball rolling in 1935 by releasing the one of the more iconic characters. So, uh, and also this had to do with the fact that Bosco and Buddy, I believe as well, were made by other animators as opposed to the animators that came in and made all of the Looney Tunes. So uh, that's really a significant um, aspect to sort of understand and maybe um, and maybe explains to why those characters never gained enough prominence. Um, and then basically what who ended up really being responsible for the Looney Tunes was Tex Avery, Frizz Freeling, and Bob Camp Clampett. Um, and uh, they they were the ones sort of hired to uh, replace the animator such animators that left. Um, and uh, it's also important to note that there's there was one guy that was really really at the forefront uh, when it comes to these cartoons, and that was Leon Sch Schleisinger. Um, and again, he was the he produced the the shorts for Warner Brothers, and so he really primarily started his own studio. And again, Warner Brothers would be in charge of showcasing it. Uh, and he was really the one who set out to um, make sure that these shorts um, became really the the shorts that they were. So without him, there probably wouldn't have been uh, Looney Tunes. But he eventually sold it to Warner Brothers later on once uh, he decided to retire, and he actually, I think, passed away fairly um, fairly recently after he uh, he sold the rights to the cartoons. So, um, again, it's sort of similar to a lot of other studios where they would have to eventually sell it um, because they can no longer keep it going on their own, so... That's kind of uh, what ended up happening with Looney Tunes, and then, and then there was this, I think, real uh, resurgence of Looney Tunes, um, sort of from once it ended in the 1960s to the 1970s and up to the 90s too, uh, because they really, re they, it was re-released on all these different. Uh, TV channels, and um, it really got the more younger generation aware of Looney Tunes. So uh, that was really, I think, an important part in contributing to uh, maintaining Looney Tunes' success as a uh, animated series. So that's really the important thing to know uh, when it comes to that, uh, to this studio in particular, is, is that they that they largely kept it going even though the shorts were from really this time period of 1930 to 1969. Um, they largely showcased though those ones that were, um, that were within that time period so that their memory sort of lives on. And you'll see this also in amusement parks. Like if you ever go to Six Flags, Looney Tunes is there. They have merchandise and all this stuff that keeps it sort of going and people sort of remember it and um, and enjoy it for what it was offering during the time. But uh, basically, um, what is happening now, at least with the Looney Tunes, is, is that we did see within like the later 90s, I think, like them trying to make a film associated with the Looney Tunes. Uh, you'll see this in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which was actually, I think, in the 80s. Um, and you'll also see this with um, with the Looney Tunes film, where they, again, put live action with animation similar to what they did in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So that's really um, 
the important, um, the one of the more imp uh, important elements I think to know with Looney Tunes is, is that they sort of always existed, and they've always maintained that level of interest I think to the public. But I think largely that's in part due to their characters, um, because their characters have been fairly marketable over the years, because they've been allowed to showcase their characters throughout um, different TV channels, uh, again, through amusement parks, and um, and largely through, um, through merchandising. And uh, that's, I think, something that's really important to to note as to their popularity. Uh, compared to Walt Disney Studios, which uh, again made shorts as well as animated films, was able to maintain its superiority really because Looney Tunes never, um, it never achieved that level of creating its own amusement park. It never got to the level of, um, of, uh, of, really creating prominent animated filmmaking. Um, it was largely based upon these characters, and I think um, it, 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 it tried to s kind of s squeeze its way through all the years through trying to um, incorporate, again, the shorts that were initially part of the series, as well as using extensive merchandising and stuff. Which Disney does too, but they probably weren't able to maintain the same level of prominence as Disney because they didn't have the same uh, capacity. And again, the guy who initially made these Looney Tunes, uh, he had to eventually sell the rights to somebody else. Walt never had to sell Elle's rights because he maintained his studio and uh, made millions and millions of dollars. So... That's, I think, something very important to note in regards to the differences between uh, these different animated studios. Um, so Sam Bright, or I, I apologize if, if I think I it's it, I think it's Dry uh, Bryster Dryster. Dreister, um, Sam Dreister, I, I hope I'm getting that right, um, came in as an animator slash director, and um, they decided, or he decided along with Warner Brothers to basically make a new Looney Tunes, uh, basically make new Looney Tunes cartoon shorts. Uh, and I believe this aired in 2011, so it was relatively recently. There's been a lot of back and forth as to whether or not certain elements of the new show are good because it, traditionally the Looney Tunes didn't take place in um, a human atmosphere like it didn't take place in a uh, in suburbia or in a in a human environment like a city you know it was largely within the country um, where animals would be uh, hence why there's a lot of animals as Looney Tunes, at least I think the majority, um, but uh, they decided for this particular Looney Tunes to have them be in that human a human environment. Uh, and uh, I think, I don't know if that's what's caused some people to not really particularly care for the newer series, or maybe they don't think it's as funny as the originals. Uh, the animation's also a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't really look the same. So um, I think it's sort of a back-and-forth thing as to whether or not uh, the quality is up to the standards of the traditional Looney Tunes. But I think overall, um, it's definitely interesting to see that these cartoons are trying to do something different and kind of regain that prominence that they really, really had between the 1930s and 90s between 1930 and 1969 because they were really popular. Um, I would say the Looney Tunes shorts were probably a lot more popular than the Walt Disney shorts. Um, but again, Walt Disney was more focused on creating different emotions. And also, 
largely more based within trying to make films rather than focusing on just cartoon shorts. Um, so, so, so that's something I think that's uh, important to note um, when it comes to how Looney Tunes was able to gain a huge amount of prominence. And I think largely that was part of the fact that once Walt Disney created um, Snow White in the 1930s, they were more focused on making animated films, and animated films require definitely a bigger budget, definitely more people So behind the project. So it's, it, it only makes sense that, um, that, the, that the cartoon shorts wouldn't become as prominent, although, again, we do have the Mickey Mouse and the Donald Duck and Goofy cartoons that were still popular during the time, but again, I think Looney Tunes was able to gain that that prominence more only because they that's what they primarily focused on. They weren't jumbling between animated films and and animated shorts. So um, that's I think something that's really uh, worth noting. Um, but uh, ultimately, that's really all I can really say when it comes to Looney Tunes. I think they're very interesting. They have a lot to, I think, offer kids. Uh, they just offer a lot different uh, emotional responses and are generated at being, again, more funny, more um, more nonsensical, more ridiculous, again more slapstick oriented and uh not really largely in trying to be um sentimental or uh or uh or um or or be very hope filled. Um they're largely based within that um within that crazy they're they're largely based within trying to create a crazy environment rather than a calming, smooth, and relaxed environment, which I think Disney cartoons were primarily focused on trying to create. So we do see the differences, and I think people liked that variety, like that they could go to and see a Disney short, but then they could also go and see a Warner Brothers short, too. Um, but yeah, I think that's really, though, all I can say. If there are any questions, comments, concerns, I believe that I would be more than happy to answer them. But I believe that's all I can say. But uh, until next time, that, 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 that's all, folks.